hey guys welcome back to my channel so today i will show you how i make my all-natural african black soap shampoo and you'll see how i wash my locks with it and what tips i recommend for washing your locks okay guys let's get started with these ingredients so for my shampoo base i'll be using liquid african black soap i know you can buy african black soap in liquid form but i had a bar of the soap so i just shredded it and boiled some water and let it melt in the water overnight next i've also used dr bronner's peppermint castile soap which is a great cleansing agent to remove dirt and grease buildup and for my essential oils, I've used tea tree oil, which helps fight bacteria and treat scalp conditions like dandruff. I've used sweet orange oil to strengthen weak and brittle hair. This also caters to the aroma of your shampoo. And last, I use the eucalyptus oil, which promotes hair growth and also caters to the scent of your shampoo. But of course, you can select any two or three essential oils that you like i would also recommend aloe vera or lavender or black castor oil as suffice alternatives now to measure and mix all of this together and as you see here i'll be using a funnel and also a measuring cup one third cup measuring cup so we'll be making uh, eight ounces worth of shampoo which should get you about three to four washes so first thing you'll need to do is go ahead and open your bottle. I didn't actually need to take that lid off. So yeah, just open your bottle that you'll be using. I love using an applicator bottle because it just makes it so much easier to shampoo. Then I'm going to take my funnel, put it right on top, and measure out first one third cup of the African black soap. And I'll be doing this two times. Then I'll need to prepare the same amount, equal parts of the peppermint castile soap so i'll go ahead and pour one and then i'll do another one as well So uh, next I'll be adding the essential oils. Honestly, you don't need much of this. A little bit will go a long way. So I would recommend about two to three drops of each essential oil. I'm gonna start here with the tea tree oil. All right, I got carried away. Got a little carried away, guys. Honestly, two to three drops is fine. There we go. And last, the sweet orange. I bet you I'm gonna get carried away here too. That's good. Some um, oils will have a dropper that comes included. That makes things a little easier if your bottle of oil comes with a dropper. You only need two to three drops. Then you're just going to close your container and shake it very well make sure it's really tight and closed and then shake your shampoo very well all right it's tight low just shake it there you go <laughs> and i love that this shampoo is very liquidy and not thick because it makes it so much easier to wash your hair and rinse it being that locks hold a lot of product it's good to make things easier to rinse out 
all right guys now let's just get right into this wash so first of all of course you're just going to wet your hair really well get it nice and saturated all the way through um then you're going to start putting your shampoo on guys i just want to say disregard my armpits i know they're dark <laughs> but yeah just apply your shampoo Again, this is why I like using an applicator bottle because it makes it super easy to thoroughly distribute the shampoo. And pay attention to how well and how sudsy the shampoo gets. Oh my gosh, guys. It definitely lathers really, really well. It gets nice and soapy, which I really like. And it's not thick, guys. It's like super easy to distribute. You don't have to put loads and loads of shampoo on your hair just for it to evenly get all the way around. But yeah, keep um, distributing. And then when you feel like you're good and ready, you can start massaging it into your hair. Give it a good scratch here and there. You want to lift up any dirt or build up that's sitting on top of your scalp. That is a big thing. There's a lot of build up not just product build up but also dead skin cell build up like that sits on your hair and i would also say that it travels down your hair as well so as you can see here i'm squeezing the shampoo through the locks like i want to make sure it's getting all the way through the locks and i'm squeezing it through this also helps to squeeze out whatever is held up inside of the top of the lock. I don't know about y'all, but that's where most of the residue or most of the buildup is at. That's where most of it takes place is right there at the top where the hair is not completely locked yet. And then where that section meets the top of the lock, if that makes sense. Now, after I felt like I got the top of my head good and lathered, I'm going to apply this shampoo to my ends of my locks, guys. That is just important as the top because dirt pollicles and not pollicles. I don't even know if that's a word. I don't know where I was going with that. But anyways, dirt and other debris and bad odor definitely get trapped in your locks when you're going about your day to day just different things that are in the air can get trapped in your locks so it's very important to wash the ends of your hair as well especially if you spend a lot of time outside or like if you're like a construction worker or something like that and there's always stuff in the air around you yeah you want to wash all that out so like I said, just it'll really saturate the ends of your hair with the shampoo like you see here. Make sure it gets good and sudsy. Now, I will say that if you notice it doesn't get sudsy, it's because there's a lot of dirt in your hair. And that means you'll probably need to do an application two times. Or you may even need to do a detox, an apple cider vinegar detox. My hair on the ends is very, very clean. Every time I wash my hair, it gets very sudsy right away. I do this quite very often well I do my hair once a month I wash my hair once a month but it's really clean so that's why it gets so sudsy on the ends but now I'm at the front and I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing here in a second Yeah, so I'm just squeezing the hair again, making sure I really scratch and lift up all the dirt off of my scalp. I want to pay a lot of attention to the top and the front of my hair because I don't know if you guys use it, but I definitely use edge control. So... That can lead to product buildup a lot as well, especially in the front and on the top. That's like my frizziest areas, lower nose. So I want to make sure I'm getting those areas really well. Oh my goodness, my armpits are so dark. Sorry.
Yeah, I'm just making sure I clean the hair really well and squeeze out any of the buildup. Squeeze out as much as I can if there's any. And now I'm rinsing. So you're just going to rinse everything out. Guys, let me stress the importance of thoroughly rinsing your hair. For this particular shampoo that we use today, it's so easy to wash this shampoo out because like I said, it's not thick. It's not thick at all, so it rinses out really well. But if you don't rinse it out thoroughly and you leave some of the shampoo in your hair, it can lead to like a moldy smell kind of like it could have a, a odor to it so just really take your time with the rinse making sure you're getting all the soap out of your locks if your locks are thick and long like mine you need to spend extra time during the rinse cycle and if you're using a shampoo that is thick and like you know like lotion like you know thick typical shampoos they have like Xanax gum in it or something like that, but it makes it thick. You especially want to make sure you're rinsing out your hair very well because those tend to get held up and caught up in locks as well. So just doing a clean check. As you can see, it's very squeaky up there. Nice and clean, fresh. Now the shampoo we used is a really good cleanser, so you might even notice that your hair feels stripped. I'm not even going to lie, you might notice that it feels very, very clean, very light. What I'm doing here is I'm just pressing really hard against my locks to squeeze and see if anything comes out. You can do that, it's like a dirt test or like a quality check of your shampoo to see if you did a good job. If there is some residue, of course, just go back in and do another round of shampooing. You can target a specific area if you notice one area is more, you know, product buildup than another. But I think we did pretty good. So I hope you guys enjoyed. That was about it. And I'm just making sure I squeeze all the water out of my hair as well. So the drying process doesn't take forever. But yeah, guys, that's basically it. After this, I'm just going to get a towel and towel dry my hair. And I'm going to deep condition it. I would love to show you guys my deep condition routine, but that would just be a little bit too much for this video. So I will make a whole new video for my deep conditioning routine. And then finally the retwisting routine. But I hope you guys enjoyed this wash video. Please leave any comments you guys have in the comment box down below. I try to leave as much of the tips in the description box that you guys can use later. And you can um, reference at any time that you need. And I hope you guys enjoyed. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, guys. You can follow me on Instagram for my business and my personal page. The links will be below. And yeah, guys, thanks for watching. And can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye.